Right guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video. In this one I'm just going to be showing you how to convert your DT Swiss wheel from a 3 pull freer body to a ratchet version. So let's go ahead, let's run through the steps. So, first thing we need to do is get the freer body off. So, what you want to do is, this is a quick release wheel, as you can see. If this was through axle, then it'd be slightly different. Same principle, you need to get the end cap off both sides. So because this is a quick release, all I'll do is remove the, the um, left hand side end cap. So we get that off, which you find that's got more to pull on, get your hand on, than the other side. It's just slightly longer this side. So once we've done that, we'll just get a, a punch and then stick down in there like that, so it rests on the other side. And I'll just knock it off like that. So we got the end cap off of the drive side. So there's both end caps there. So then what you need to do is pull your freer body off. So you should be able to get hold of it and pull that off. If it's tight to grab hold of and try and pull it off like that, then you can always try putting your cassette on there with the lock ring on and put your hands behind the cassette and try and, and prise it off like that so you get a bit more leverage on it. If that doesn't work then that your freer body could be seized on there from lack of maintenance. So if that's the case I'll just put a link up on the screen to how to remove it if it's seized on there. So once you remove it you can see there's the three pull free up body itself. Then you've got, once you've removed that, you've got the spacer in there. Take that off as well. And then you can see down in there, see we get to the ratchet, there's a ring in there with the teeth on it, we need to remove that as well. But first of all what we've got to do is get the axle out of the way. So I'll just show you how to do that. So what we've got there's a couple of blocks of wood on the floor. I'm just showing you like this, so you don't need nothing special to do it with, just in case you haven't got a voice or anything. You can just use two blocks, equal heights on the floor. Then rest your wheel down like that. So the left hand side's sticking down. Obviously you've got your axle out the bottom there. So there's no point in putting it directly on top of a block of wood, because it's not going to do anything. So you just put it so the axle is just between the pieces of wood like that. And then what you need to do is get a, a rubber mallet or a soft blow hammer to hit the axle with. Don't hit that with a normal hammer because the axle is aluminium so you'll just damage the end completely and then you won't be able to ever use it again because your free body won't slide back on there. So you just get yourself a hammer like that and just hit that down. And as you see it comes down to the bearing is flush then with the edge of the hub itself so it's, you know it's coming out so if you just hold it then up above the block of wood just keep it up a bit off of there and then give it a tap like that and as you can see it comes out so you've got the bearing on the end and then the axle will just pull out like that. So we're just left with the bearing up in side there to remove. So what we're going to do is remove the bearing out of there because we need to remove the ring in there and to do that, to get that ring out I'm going to use some heat on it. So it's best to remove that bearing out of the way first before you start putting any heat on this ring to remove it because you'll damage that bearing because it's got a rubber seal on it so it's not going to do that any good with heat on against it so what you want to do to remove that is just put it face down on a block of wood like that and then just get a 13 millimeter socket there with a little extension and just put that down, rest it on the middle of the bearing down in the bottom there. So you can rest that in there and then hit that down. You 
see there the bearings coming out so it's nearly out there so all you do is just keep it up off your block of wood otherwise you won't be able to remove it completely so just lift it up off the block of wood and as you can see there's the bearing out of there so now we're left with the empty free hub empty hub sorry so to remove this ring what you need is there's a special tool to remove that now that special tool is about 50 60 pounds to buy so you're not going to spend that sort of money just to remove that ring out of there so what we're going to do is if you want to just remove this once you don't want to obviously buy that tool or anything then this is a park tool 5.2 uh, cassette lock ring tool so if you get one of these obviously you can use it for your cassettes and then you've got it for the future for your Shimano cassettes that's what it's for one of these so if you get one of these now the outside diameter of this will fit in there exactly like that so then you can use that in there with the socket over it and the extension bar as you'll see to remove it so that's what that socket is and it fits in there exactly to remove it saves buying an expensive tool get these relatively cheap and you can and they're dual purpose you obviously because it is a cassette lock ring removal tool that's what it's for it just happens that it fits that so you can use it So there you go, you just heard it crack undone then. So now you can just carry on. And unscrew that out, you can see it's coming out. There we have the uh, ring removed. So here's the parts that we actually need to carry out the conversion from the free pull to this ratchet system. So you've got your free hub body there that you'll need. So that's a ratchet free hub body. Because what you do, obviously there you see the ratchet fits in there like that. You need two ratchets, they're available in different, you get different versions of those, like 18, 2, 36, 54, etc. Two springs, spacer, collar there, that goes on the axle. The actual ring that goes into the hub itself, obviously to accommodate the ratchet like that you see and then there's a washer there that goes behind this ring like that sits behind it where the bearing is so that's what you actually need those components to complete it so next thing we need to do is put the bearing back in the drive side so where the freer body would be so first of all what you want to do is obviously clean up where where you've removed the other one out there put some grease around where it's going to sit inside the hub like that and then obviously at the same time what you want to do is if your wheel bearings need replacing obviously replace them now while you can 
So you get yourself a couple of new bearings to replace the ones you removed. The same size, the numbers are obviously on the bearing, so you just look on the bearing and see what numbers you need for your particular wheel. Just put a coating of grease around the bearing like that and put some over the face of the seal on the inside of the wheel, what's going to be down inside, what you don't see just helps keep some moisture out of the bearing. Then all we do is put that inside the hub there just sit that in place for a moment and then what we do is just press that into the back into the hub so if you've got your bearing press with the right size press on it to start with and then all we do is just obviously press that down inside the hub until it stops so we'll get that pressed in there so we just press that bearing in back into the hub there making sure you're pushing it in square so Push it in there until it stops, and then remove your tool. Then we can go ahead and fit that ratchet ring back in. So once you've got the bearing installed, then what you need to do is the washer that you've got for this conversion is the washer goes in on top of that bearing. So you put the washer in like that. Now, before you go ahead and put the ring back in, see for the ratchet one. Then what you need to do is put some anti-seize. It's best just to put a little bit of anti-seize around here so it makes it easier to remove if you ever have to get it out again. Just makes it a lot simpler to remove with a bit of anti-seize on there. So this ring, if you look at one side of it, there's a bit of a, an indent here and there's not on the other side, this side's flush, it's flat and this side's got a bit of a, an indent in it there That this side with the indent goes down over that washer that you just put in to allow the washer to sit in there so if I just get the washer back out like that that washer sits in there like that still groove, just sits in there like that so you just put the washer down in there and then you can just put some anti-seize on there and then you can screw the ring into the into the hub so be careful when you're starting it off make sure it starts off without cross threading it so just take your time and get that in there without cross threading it at all you don't want to damage the threads in the actual hub because this is steel and the hub is aluminium so make sure you just take your time and get that started correctly then we can just carry on and thread that down by hand to start with so we just wind that in if the threads are clean and everything and you put some anti seize it should just thread in quite easily so once you got it down in there just make sure that the washer is actually in position underneath it properly as it should be it's not it's not got caught up so the best thing to do is lie it down and then just line that washer up with a screwdriver underneath it and then make sure that the ratchet screwed down by hand as far as you can go so if you want to just back it off a bit, line that washer up underneath so it sits in the groove and then screw your ring back down on top of it. So we've got that in as best we can by hand. Now this is a completely different size so there's another specialist tool to tighten this up with. Obviously the one you, the lock ring tool 
that we used earlier to remove the other ratchet won't even fit inside that one because this one is a different size so that's no good for anything now for tightening that up so if you got it so far by hand get it as good as you can see so put your nail in tighten it down as best you can like that and then what you do is just get a pair of circuit pliers or anything like that or a um, or you could even try and use the your chain master link pliers we just get that in there like that just to so as it just gets a bit extra that you can't get by hand you only need to nip it up a bit because this will tie in itself up so anything that goes in there like that just to nip it up a little bit just to make sure it is just just over hand tight basically that's all you've got to worry about because that ring tightens itself up when you're pedalling anyway that ring just gets tighter and tighter that's why they're hard to remove anyway so as long as it's you can't physically move it with your finger then that's tight enough because when we get it installed it'll tighten itself up fully anyway over time when, you, when you're riding so once that's in like that it's not going to go anywhere so now we can get the axle through and the other side bearing again so what we do is we spin the wheel round to the other opposite side now before we get the axle and this bearing back in what you want to do is just put some grease over where the bearings where it's going to pass through so over the axle where the free hub would sit you'll see this bearings on this end so you can just take that off if you need to replace it replace that at the same time just put a bit of grease where that one's going to go and then while there's no axle in there just put some grease this end where that bearing is going to sit before we put it in just so the axle's out of the way we can just get to it easier to grease it now while the axle's not there so what we do then is literally get your axle see this is the left hand side so we just put the long part through like that push it all the way through so it comes out like that and then bearing to install that bearing so you want the two blocks of wood just move them apart and put the axle down through the gap like that make sure and the axle doesn't hit the floor or anything obviously you can do this on a bench with a couple of blocks of wood if you've got a decent bench to use again I'm just showing you like this to make so you can just do it at home you don't need any special tools to do it just get your bearing put some grease around it again if you've got a new one put some grease on the inside there as well what's going to go down inside the hub what you don't see just to help keep the moisture out of it and then sit that over the axle and just push it down in like that just so it's going in flush now I'll just show you we'll get that tap down in place so to put this bearing in we just use a 20 millimeter socket and just hold it over the bearing like that so it's exactly the same size as the outside of the bearing We'll never hit where the seal is on the bearing she'll ruin it before you put it in just hold it over there like that and then we just tap that down in so there's a bearing installed there so it goes down just slightly inside the hub itself so you've got to get your end cap on there so that's that one installed so we can go back around to this side now and install the free hub and the ratchets on there so before we do anything what we'll do is just put a little bit of grease over the actual axle itself so grease that first and then with your spacer put that in position like that over the axle so it's just down touching the bearing just put a little bit of grease over it as well again and then 
we've got these so ratchets like I showed earlier and the springs as well to put in so what you do is if you get a spring and then if you see the springs larger on one side than is the other so the smaller side part of the spring the smaller bit we'll just go on there first over it so the larger part of the springs facing up and then with your ratchet what you need is you get some DT thrift grease it's this red grease so you get a little bit of that and then you just put a thin coat in over the actual ratchets itself and just over the front so you just put a thin coat in over there before you put them in you don't take a lot of grease you just put a smear over it they're not designed to be absolutely covered in grease thick grease because they won't work properly otherwise so if you put over like that and then we sit that down over there and obviously what will happen is as you can see it's spring loaded so it goes inside the ratchet you put in earlier the ring and it's spring loaded in there so it bounces up and down like that so that's that one installed there and then you got your actual freer body that we'll put on in a minute so what you do is get your other get your other ratchet like I just showed and then again go over with your grease and just put a thin smear over the outside of it and over the over it like that again just where it makes in contact so once we got that greased then you've got your hub and then what you do so obviously you've got your one side's smooth and one side's got the teeth on it see the teeth on that are pointing up so the teeth on this one go down to meet the teeth on that one you just drop that over like that as you can see they're engaged when the teeth come together like that so they're all one piece again and then you've got your spring again see the wide, the wide part the larger part of the spring goes down facing that one so small part is facing up and then before you put your freer body on make sure there's a collar inside there just make sure that's lined up otherwise it'd be hard to slide on because it moves around a little bit inside there and then grease just get your paintbrush there and grease inside the freer body before you put it over the axle put some grease up inside between the two bearings there just helps to remove it at a later date and then once you've got it lined up you'll do like I said line that collar up inside so it slides on and then slide it down like that so as it engages like that so what we need to do now is put the end caps back on so before you put your end caps on just put some grease up inside them just over the face of them there just keeps the moisture out of there and then we'll see put your correct one on for left and right hand side so this is a quick release wheel so it's got the longer one on the left hand side just push that in and then 
do the same on the uh, drive side just put a bit of grease around it like that and in the middle there before you put it on push that in place like that so there we have the uh, ratchet Well guys, so there we have the ratchet conversion complete. So we've gone from the three pull to the ratchet conversion. So I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, remember to give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel for more cycle related content. Till next one, ride safe and I'll see you then.